that is Chioma. When I say Chioma, I don't mean Chioma by Davido, but Chioma by Porchiso. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Good to have Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be How here. How long ago did you do that video? You looked way younger. Yes. Not like you look old. No, you look really good. <laughs> Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't look old at all, but like you, you looked younger there. Yeah. Um, the song, we recorded the song in 2013. The video was done 2014 in SA, Cape Town. Yeah, so Interesting. it's really a flashback. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. So let, let's go back to the beginning of this journey for you through okay. music. You're one, you're really one very talented gospel artist, I must say, with a very Thank rich you. voice. Thank now, the you. thing is, did it always, did you start out doing music in church? Or at, at what point did you realize you wanted to do music professionally? Um, yeah, I started out doing music in church. Um, I'm a PK, and that's pastor's kid, you know. Um, grew up in church. Uh, I was privileged to, you know, run to the instruments after each service, you know. And because I was the pastor's child, people would not really stop you. You know how it is yeah. when some random kid is just running to the drums to make noise. Everybody would say, hey, stop that. But they look and they see, oh, that's the pastor's son. They allow you, you know. So, and then at home, I started playing drums on everything, utensils, table, TV set. I was just beating everything. So my dad said, you know what, there's really an interest here. And um, he told the music director then to, you know, start giving me some lessons after church. So, yeah, I started off in church. I'm a church boy. Interesting. Yes. So did you, when you started the music lessons, did you, did you include instrumentals as well? Do you play any instruments apart from singing? Yes, I started off with drums before even um, I discovered that, you know, I could actually sing. I started off with drums and then at some point I started teaching myself keyboard. So I also, you know, um, um, started playing the keyboard. I play the keyboard now to write my songs and, you know, when I want to worship, you know, you know for myself, my private worship. But, you know, I started off playing the instruments before I discovered that I could sing and it's been a beautiful journey I must say. When did you decide to take music professionally because there are many people that can sing you know mm. some of us are fantastic bathroom singers and karaoke <laughs> singers but some people actually even have a really good voice yeah. but they don't want to take it professionally but you are a professional singer so at what point did you decide you needed to take it professionally? Um, I knew when I fell in love with music especially singing I knew I wanted to do this for, you know, for a very long time. I knew I would like to pursue a career in this. So, um, but I'll say professionally, I've been doing this for the past 15 years, you know, professionally. When I decided, I know what, let's just go all out and make this thing work. It's been 15 years um, journey and we're still here. Um, one that really, you know, music is a tool is 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 not a, is a means to an end it's not the end in itself so um you for one know that there are so many other things i can do aside music but like i said you know god will always start with start off with you at a certain point say okay let's pick it up from here so it's a tool and one that i am not um, sure i'm ready to drop even when i'm 60 70 i still want to be able to get up on a stage and sing whilst I'm doing any other thing. It's part of it, it's a tool. All right. Now let's talk about your personal life beyond music. You mm. mentioned that you're a pastor's I like kid. that beyond music. Yes. There's a concert. <laughs> Interesting. Some beyond, years music. Back, beyond music. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned that you're a pastor's kid. Yeah. There's this usual mindset or stereotype that growing up as a pastor's kid, there's so much pressure put on the child to grow up. Was yeah. this your case or was it any different? Um, at some point, yes, you know, um, you know, the, the same mindset people have towards um, pastors and uh, ministers, as it, as it were, they believe you should be a spirit, you should be floating, you're not supposed to have any weakness, do you understand, you should be a perfect human being, somehow it rubs off on their, their kids, the, the, the children, you know, so when people see you, when, for instance, someone sees you outside, Smoking. They catch you smoking. They're like, wow, how can the pastor's child be smoking or doing, you know, one of these other vices? And they, they forget that you're also a human being. You have your own struggles. The way other people find Jesus is also how you will forget that you were born into a religious home. Do you understand? You know, Christianity is 
per person. You have to find God for yourself. You have to develop that relationship with Jesus for yourself. So um, I had that pressure also where people just look at you and they, they believe that you should be perfect. You understand? They believe that you should be righteous by association because you are, you know, your, your father is a pastor. But it's actually not like that. We have weaknesses. We have things we struggle with. In fact, pastor's children are most likely to be depressed more than anyone else, most likely to, you know, commit suicide more than anyone else because of the pressure that society, the church, let me not just say society, religious people put on you to be in a certain way or become a certain person. Were you ever at any point depressed as a result of this? Yes, I was. Um, I remember for three years, I didn't want to have anything to do with the church. I was bitter. I was sad. You know, I was depressed. I, 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 just, I just ran away from God. And that's the lie of the enemy. I'm wiser now. Do you understand? I, I have more knowledge now. But that's what the enemy actually does. You know, he will isolate you to destroy you. So I, I found myself in that place where I was bitter. I was upset with the system. And it, it, it drew me far away from God. How did you then find your way back? Ah, you know God is faithful. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, his faithfulness has nothing to do with what you do. You know, it has nothing to do with um, how faithful you are. God is just faithful. And I wouldn't say I found my way back. He never left. He, he was right there with me all the time. He never left. So... I, I, at, at some point, even while I was away, you know, you have a conscience that has already been dedicated to God. So that conscience keeps speaking, telling you the truth of who you are. This is who you are, you know, and I never stopped hearing God. A time came, some incident led me to looking up again and saying, no, Lord, what, you know what, Lord, um, I, I, I hands off, I, I, I step away from, from, you know, stopping what you intend to do with my life. You know, I hand over to you. Just lead me. Let's go. So now since you've been through this process, you've had your own fair share of pressures from the church, from the world, going through a bit of depression and then coming back, you know, finding your feet, mm. given the benefit of hindsight, let's look at the lessons that have been learned from them. Now I'm asking this question because there are also some parents that will be watching, that would mm. have young people, yeah. you know, and they want to force them to stay in the church because they mm. understand, they want them to be in church. Yeah. But some of them feel that... Some of these children start to feel the pressure, most especially the pastor's kids. Mm. So for pastor's kids like you and parents of pastor's kids, mm. what are the lessons you'd be able to share from this experience you've drawn? Okay, um, number one is you are just a guardian of the child. The child belongs to God. It's a gift given to you. So do not, um, your, your, your duty is to teach that child, especially when they are young, the ways of the Lord the moral ways to, you know, live life so that when they begin to grow, they will always remember. The Bible says that they will not depart from it. Do you understand? So our, our duty as parents, I'm a parent now, so I can say our duty. Yes, <laughs> you know, your parents. Our duty is to teach, you know, is to teach, to keep teaching, especially when they are young, formative years, when they can, you know, actually understand and begin to toe that line. Things will happen. Life will always happen. You know, they will go to school, they will leave you, they will leave the ter your terrain, you know, where you cannot really enforce a lot of things. But it is the teachings, the things you have taught them, the things they've seen you also do. Because, you know, these days it's not just words that children learn from. They learn from actually what you do the most. So the, the, the lifestyle you live and that they've seen over the years, they will remember that. Actually, that's what kept me, you know, when I, I it felt as if I was losing it all. I remembered who I was. I remember the examples my, my parents set for me. And that drew me back to the love of God. So you do your bit. God is actually the one that takes care and trains a child. So do your bit, as like that formative years. When they leave the home, the things you have taught, God will remind them. 
very, and that very will guide them in, in fantastic guide them in life. advice at the end of the day. Yeah. And we're hoping that some parent or young person who's watching this will be able to learn lessons from there. And if you are going through a phase of depression, we want you to understand that you are not alone. Yeah. You know that you will come out of it. It won't be for long. And speak up. If you need to get help, please yes. get help. Do not keep to yourself. There's someone out there willing to show you love. The only thing is, will you be willing to receive this love? Mm. Open up and, and, and share your challenges with people. Let's talk about your journey as a music minister. Mm. Do you at any point feel like being a gospel music minister has put any hindrance you know, to how far you could have gone in your career? Not at all. Not at all. Um, I, I knew from when I decided to take this as, you know, as a career seriously and you know as a ministry i i knew that god will always take care of me i knew that um I, i've also been in you know a ministry environment for years you know i could look at my parents i saw the way god took care of them and took care of us so i i started developing that faith and trust in god that god would take and i didn't answer the call for money but I've also learned that God will not call you and leave you stranded. So um, I'd already developed that faith. I had issues initially, to be very honest. You know, when, when I started, I had issues because um, you, you have labels and management come at you. And oh, we, we see the, the gift, we see the talent. We can actually do a lot with this. We can expose you to a lot of things. So ideas came up, you know. If you have this song, we can edit this part out of it. To be honest with you, just last week, we sent our, our video, the new video we shot to a, a station, and the, 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 the producer of, of that particular show listened to it, and he said, wow, this is such a strong spiritual song, and it's blessing me already. But you know, for our viewers, we cannot air this song because it has a lot of spiritual content in it. It has to be mixed. It has to be balanced for our viewers. And, you know, that has been the challenge from the beginning, where people want you to compromise to an extent so that you can belong. And then to them, they say you can be marketable. But that's not what we represent. That's not what I'm looking for. We have a message that is unique, you know, and my job is to share and speak about that and allow God to take care of my needs. And he has. Look at me. I'm a blessed man. Indeed so the challenge, like I said, was there initially. But over the years, I've been able to overcome that. And I know my place. And I can actually encourage young people who, you know, are aspiring to be gospel minister. You know, the challenges will come. But you stand your ground. The most important thing is, are you called by God? There has to be a calling. Uh, if you do this for money, that's where the problem is. That's why you fight with churches, you fight with pastors, you look for one pastor to accuse, you know, and all of that. But if this is a calling, just know that your source is not man. God is your source. And he, he can open up channels from anywhere to bless you. So keep your eyes on him and just do the work. Let's talk about your, your writing, your creative process. Lead us through your creative process. How long does it take you to write a song? When do you decide you want to write a song? How do you know what you want to write about? Okay, uh, to be very honest, I can write a song like this. Really? Yes. Okay. I can write a song like this. Um, why? Because uh, life inspires me to write. My personal experiences inspires me to write. What people around me go through inspires me to write. And uh, most importantly, the word of God is my biggest inspiration. And that word is in me. So I can write into some people say they have to... Yeah, there are times you're working on a particular project that you need time, you need space to get out of the noise and all of that. But that doesn't mean you, there's spontaneity. You can just stay and the word will keep bubbling in you and there's a melody in your heart. Especially if you're someone that I always have a melody in my heart. My head is always moving. My mind is always working. So if you're like me, writing cannot be a problem. I can wake up like this. Oh, is that something? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's you. Definitely, you are leading a choir. Yes, you, you, yes. Um, so you obviously you've you've gone you've sang on many many big stages, and we yes. look forward to seeing you doing more and more work. Yes, you have you. a recent video, Victory. Yes. Tell yes. us about it. Um, it's it's a special song, one that talks about um, our victory in Christ. No matter how it gets played, we've won already. 
you know um we are not what we are doing now it's not uh, we're not fighting to get victory we're fighting from the point of victory you know and um i, I actually got the song at a time of um emotional um how do i put it at a time where i was in some in a, an emotional place you know and god started reminding me again of what he has done for me that all I have to do is take what he has given. He has given me the victory. I have to embrace it. And so there's a particular line of the song I like. It says, you know, they use me play. You they hash for my matter. I'm the apple of your eyes. I'm so precious to you. Uh, this can actually be born out of a revelation of <coughs> God's love. That no matter how it is played, you are loved by God. God is actually your father. Imagine God being your father. Now, literally, imagine God who made the heavens and the earth being your father. So, like, as your I'm name is show, actually Olive, Olive God. God. Hmm, nice. I really like that analogy. Your father. Interesting. So you can never lose. Never. Never. If at least in every area of life, you know, when we say these things, people think it's just for pastors and church. And no, at your place of work, you cannot lose. In your health, you cannot lose. In your marriage, you cannot lose. If you're experiencing any form of loss and defeat, begin to enforce the victory that your father has given to you in that area. Right. And you begin to see things. I don't want to preach. Interesting. <laughs> I'd like to see, you know, I, I can't wait for us to see the video. We're going to see the video shortly. But before then, very quickly, who would you say are your musical inspirations, gospel artists or secular, whichever, in Nigeria and outside Nigeria? Okay, um, gospel artists, um, a few people, um, Ty Tribet, um, Israel, here at home, uh, people like um, Sinaj, Adai, Tim Godfrey, Natana, these are people that, you know, inspire you through the things they do and their songs. And um, in the music industry in Nigeria, I, I, I love to face you know, for his consistency and originality. You know, I, I, I love what he has been able to achieve over the years. And I'm sure there are many people who are saying, ah, I love Paul Chisholm, Paul Chisholm inspires me too. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, I want to weigh in on your thoughts very quickly on Nigeria, finally, rather. Lots of people are on different sides of the divide with regards to making progress in our country. Some people have said, we've hidden so much under the cloak of prayer. Mm. It's time for us to work. Mm. Some others are saying, it's not enough to work. We have to pray. Mm. What side of the divide are you on? Let me say this. Prayer has kept us thus far. Without the prayers of the church and the saints in Nigeria, Nigeria would have been a mess. You think we're in a mess. Take away prayer and see the disaster. Take away prayer and see the, blood, the, the level of bloodshed. So we cannot stop praying as much as we are working. There must be a balance. Okay, so, so people, you want to, we have to have it has, there's, it has to be, there's nothing like, let's go and walk. Walk from where? where? Who will give you the strength to walk? The strength comes from God, from the place of prayers. So there's nothing like, let's also leave walk and just go and pray. It's from prayers that God would give us direction on what to do. I don't know if you understand. So we cannot just go and walk without praying. We must pray. And from prayers, God would let us know empower us to work so there's there's going to be a balance we have to find a balance so people preaching go walk it's time to walk it's time to shout it's time to protest and all of that <laughs> it has to come from place of direction and prayers all right we've had the pleasure of speaking with paul chiso my win on his thoughts with regards to his career our country and even matters on depression it's been such an absolute pleasure having you thank you we want to listen to your music video we want to watch your music video okay. but just to Check if that voice is really auto-tuned. We're going to put you on the spot. <laughs> the part of your song that you like the most. Okay. Can you do it for us in 10 seconds? Sure. You know they use me play. You they hash for my matter. I'm the apple of your eyes. I'm so precious to you. You left your glorious throne. Carry my sin for your head. You nailed it on the cross. To give me victory, yeah, I have got the victory, oh, total victory, I've got the victory, it's total victory, yes, I've got the victory, 
total victory. I've got a victory. Yes, it's total victory. Woo! Thank you so much. Thank you. That's Paul Chiso. You can follow him on Instagram at at Paul Chisom underscore on Twitter, same thing as Paul Chisom underscore on All Facebook, right. Paul Chisom. To enjoy more of this, our Ugon Get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.